Now working our way up from the base, the next thing we need is this little leg that comes up and kind of creates the bottom piece of our housing. And we can create that next. So let's go to, uh, let's exit our current part and say insert components, new part, click the front plane to get that started, exit the default sketch just as we've been doing, rename this thing, I don't know, let's call it the leg just for fun, right click that, save an external file and hit OK. This is all very repetitive so far. We'll right click this and open the part in a new window, insert part, We'll grab that master model one more time, open it up. We just need the surface bodies and also unabsorbed sketches this time. Hit OK. And this time we don't need the bottom two surfaces, right? So let's go to our surface bodies, select those bottom two surfaces, hit the delete key, create that delete bodies feature. So we're left with just the stuff that we need. And then we can go ahead and actually start to do some modeling. Now first, let's go to our Surfaces tab and over to Knit Surface. That's how we join surfaces together. It's called Join in Rhino or several other programs. In SolidWorks, we call it Knit. And in the Selections dialog, we're going to choose these two pieces. We do want to merge those together. Hit OK. And you can see that the line between them is no longer blue. It's actually a dashed line in my case, showing me that this is a, a tangent line. That's a custom setting. And then I'll go to my appearances, and I'll set this thing, I don't know, to blue, let's say. And next we need to create a, a solid out of this. Uh, first, let's trim this down. Let's go to Trim Surface, Standard Mode, and the Trim tool will be this uh, curve right here, this unabsorbed sketch. And then we'll keep selections and click on the back piece to keep that and hit OK. So we're left with just the back piece of this guy. And then we'll trim surface once again. This time, again standard, choosing the back curve, and we'll keep the center piece and hit OK. So we're left with just this little bit of the surface that we want. Now we'll hide those two sketches again. We don't need them for the moment. And head to the right plane and create a sketch there. Look normal to it. And we want another, uh, another shape, right? Uh, this time, we want the shape to fill in this whole area, and again, we could do this a wide variety of ways. We could create surfaces and stitch them up. We could thicken this using the Thicken command, but actually, let me just show you what's wrong with that. I'll go to my Features uh, tab here. Let's exit that sketch that I was in. We'll go to my Features and do, uh, let's see, uh, actually, Surfaces. There we go, and we'll do a Thicken. Click on that surface. We'll thicken it in by, I don't know, three millimeters and hit OK. And that all looks well and good, right? That looks like, yes, I got the result that I want. Let's zoom in here. You notice that there's a line between this face and that face on the inside of our thickened surface? That's actually because this face and that face are not planar, actually. They're within a tolerance defined by these outside guys. They're just going normal or perpendicular to that original surface, which may or may not actually be perfectly planar. Now, in theory, Right? If you think about mathematically, we define these surfaces to be normal to the right plane. So if we go 90 degrees to those, we should end up with a flat plane again. But in practice, in CAD, things are never that precise. And in reality, this surface is not actually planar, which causes us problems. For example, if I go to my features now and do a mirror and grab the right plane and mirror this body across it and try to merge those solids together, hit OK, it's going to fail and say that it can't do it. And that's because this thickened surface, th these faces that should meet up perfectly in the middle, they actually don't meet up perfectly in the middle. There's a tolerance problem there. Uh, so there are ways that we could work around that. We could actually do our mirror operation before we do the thicken, but that's just not ideal. And there are a lot of other reasons why that's not ideal. For example, the thicken operation, again, consumed our surface body, so we can't use it for anything else. All right, so I hope I've made my point there. There are a lot of other reasons, too, that I haven't even gotten to for why this is a great method. Anyway, you'll do what you want to do, and that's fine. So now I'm going to create a line uh, that goes from this point to that point, and then over to here, and then up to here, and somewhere out here, doesn't matter. How about right there? And there, and close it up. So now we have a closed shape that is bigger than our surface. Go to our features, 
do an extruded boss, and we'll go up to surface, choose our surface body, and hit OK. We're left with a solid that is completely filled in, and this is a planar face now. And I hope you see where I'm going with this, because if I use the shell command, click these three faces, and make them three millimeters, and hit OK, I end up with a result that looks very, very similar to that thicken command, except Look at that, that line is gone now because these are now planar faces, which is exactly what I wanted. And now if I go to mirror and mirror across the right plane, mirror this body, merge solids, hit OK, it works perfectly, no problem. And on top of it all, I get to keep that surface body to use later. Exactly what I want. Actually, let's go ahead and delete that mirror operation and then we'll make a couple more adjustments to this before we finish it up.